Gaelic football is shrouded in history. It is one of four sports controlled by the Gaelic Athletic Association, the GAA, which was established as a sporting body in 1887. On Bloody Sunday in 1920, during the Anglo-Irish War, a football match at Croke Park was attacked by British forces. 14 people were killed and 65 were injured. Among the dead was Tipperary footballer Michael Hogan. 1949, Dublin's Croke Park staged the 63rd All-Ireland Senior Football Championship. County Meath made sporting history by winning their first title. This was the same year that the Republic of Ireland Act ended the country's status as a British Dominion. 71 years later, Gaelic football is paving the way for a new kind of history marketing itself overseas. Since 1975, County London has been competing in the Cornwall Championship. The County of London is a county away from home for a lot of people. One team and one borough are making the sport a success here in the UK is Fulham Irish. Fulham Irish was formed in 2006, starting out with two men's teams, which grew to include a ladies team and a hurling team, who have been involved in competition since 2011. Three-time really All-Ireland winner Owen Mulligan has been Fulham Irish manager for a second year running and has been described as the perfect fit to help take Fulham Irish into success. Ex-players such as Owen Mulligan are key in the efforts to promote the Gaelic Games. Club founder John Doyle mentioned in a statement that schools coaching in the borough dropped due to a lack of interest. However, is there more the GAA can do to produce a younger profile of players in the British capital? Yeah, you definitely need to do more in London, all over Britain, Warwickshire, Lancashire, everywhere, Hertfordshire. They need to go into the schools, go into the local communities, the churches, use the church, um, you know. And um, yeah, they need to promote it more because there is significant drop in numbers playing Gaelic sports in London, I believe. The GAA has long been associated with the Catholic Church and in the last decade has begun to thrive on its own in a world of globalised sport. Admittedly, it's not like the 1950s and 60s where the church played a too, too major a role, some people would say, but yeah, they need to f use the churches, use the local schools, Irish centres, Irish bars, find the people there, get access to their children, encourage them to play these games. The GEA is a powerful organisation with an important social and cultural influence in Irish life. One reason why the sport has popularised here in London is a result of Irish or second generation Irish wanting to connect with their sense of identity. My children now as well, I, I try to encourage them to, to play the Gaelic games as well. So yeah, it carried it on. The grandparents now see their grandchildren playing and it carries the identity back to their Irish roots. The GAA sold their broadcasting rights to Sky Sports in 2017. The move was made to try and grow the game in the UK market, but has it had an impact? Definitely the Sky Sports contract over here in Great Britain has helped because it's opened the eyes to a lot more people. And uh, yeah, but it needs a bit more promoting. The way in which all sports are viewed has changed dramatically in the past 40 years. Before TV contracts, the Gaelic games are viewed in cinemas for those living in the UK. TV contracts in the last decade has made games a lot more accessible for those living outside of Ireland. Sky has helped them to open up more rather than just RTE or over in Britain when I was growing up you used to have to go to cinemas to watch Gaelic games. You'd have to pay to go into a cinema. Then we had it on Channel 4 for a short time and then they dropped it. I suppose monetary reasons. Greed some would say on behalf of the uh, GAA. But um, yeah, it's opened it up a lot more.
Before the Sky Sports contract, Gaelic games were free to air in Ireland. Although the GAA has been successful in promoting the Gaelic games here in the UK, the Sky TV contract has left home supporters living in Ireland feeling hard done by. A considerable number of the Irish community have been signing online petitions as a way to show their loathing towards the contract. Part of their loathing for the contract is that the money being made from the GAA is not directly being put back into the grassroots of the sport. Non-paid volunteers are at the front line for promoting the sports abroad, but lack of funds makes it harder for small clubs to promote the games. They're relying too much on volunteers. All right, it's, it's not a professional association, but everyone knows that there is money exchanging hands and the Sky TV money could be shared out more evenly back in Ireland. But also you could say that about America, Australia, other places. Dubai has a strong Irish expat community. So, you know, they need to promote the games more. If they want to make them more foreign, more accessible to all, all people, they've got to promote it harder. Overall, the GAA has been successful in its attempts to market itself here in the UK, but the backlash it has received from its own home supporters means the GAA has a social responsibility to develop its broadcast model, which both promotes the sport and keeps the home fans happy. Anglo-Irish history has been intertwined for centuries. Hopefully a new kind of history can continue to be developed between two countries through the appreciation of Gaelic football.